Welcome to the IBM Podcast Network. TFG Football is an IBM production and you can also check out their other awesome shows like Simplified, a show that explains intense topic from around the world and simplifies it for you so that you can up your cooler in front of your friends. You're listening to TFG Football. Hello and welcome everyone. This is a new day, a new episode of the TFG New Football Podcast. First of all, wishing everyone, all our listeners, happy Eid. Eid, Eid Mubarak. Yes. Uh, and uh, hope this uh, joyous festival brings all peace and harmony among all of us. And uh, hope you're we'll celebrating it with some good food as well. <laughs> and get some get some for us as well. If yeah, you, you, you can, can invite, us, invite us over. Yeah. <laughs> There's a, just because we don't have everybody that this is, we are still in office. Yeah. <laughs> So let us know about it. Now let's move on with uh, the usual topics that we talk about. We have a few signings uh, to talk about today. Now three players, uh, uh, as well FC, have been on a signing spree for some time now. Um, they've been they've roped uh, two new players and one was a contract renewal. Uh, the contract renewal is a player named Lal Bia Thanga. Uh, so he's a central midfielder. That's the renewal. His and uh, all youngsters, I must say, the same thing that Isol FC is sticking with. And a new contract is uh, Val Puya, who is a central defender. And we have three different roles. One is a midfielder, then is a defender, and then they have signed a keeper, uh, which who goes by the name Ralrem Ruata. So, well, it's again, they're sticking to that core thing, right? That we will uh, lift up the youngsters and get them. Local. Yeah, the local players, the Mizo boys, as they would love to call them. And uh, I think as well is looking at something really beneficial like they've always. The, the important part is just because they become champions of India, they don't want to go on a spending spree or, or take, you know, gather eyeballs and take all the big names. But they're still sticking to their core, that is the local players, just like you said. Now, I think apart from this, the big other signing has been, we we, sp- we spoke about uh, this man, Thang Bhai Singh, to once again, Kevin's favorite man, favorite coach, rather, uh, that there were rumors that he might go to Azol or Shillong is still wanting to keep him. But now everything, the rumors are to be rested because the final confirmation has come in that he will be, he's assigned uh, assistant coach uh, at Kerala Blasters and also the youth of course, the tech director of the youth uh, football there, and no surprises it's for the second half. But Kevin, how did you take this news as assistant coach of the ISL team? Wasn't expecting this because uh, knowing Singh's background, yes, obviously he's uh, revolved around the youth a lot, and uh, because things are not very clear, so you can't really uh, say it, it's uh, it's not the best of moves because. We were expecting him to continue and grow at Shillong Lojong as he has always. Um, but he's an accomplished coach. You know, He's done wonders with this young team. Hmm. And I'm sure he is up for, for the task that he's, uh, is at hand for him. Yeah. You know, uh, Steve Coppell, he'll be assisting him. Yeah. So I think both be, will go hand in hand because when Steve Coppell is the man who gives... Uh, another you know, gives the responsibilities of new faces, gives chance to the new players. I see Kopel as a very patient person because mm. uh, we've seen uh, what a bad start uh, Kerala yeah. had, yeah. and he still showed faith. And uh, he came in at a season where you know things were not at the best, mm. but still he managed to you know hold on, and you've seen what results it gives. You know, uh, it's just a like for like personality for both yeah. Steve Kopel and Singto. Uh, both wanting to go make a slow and a long you know, uh, vision game. Hmm. Uh, to we've seen how Shillong you know, you know, started off not on a very bright note, hmm. but then they got stronger towards the middle, and then a the finish also was excellent. Yeah. Now, Chiranjit, uh, do you look that look at it as a great partnership brewing there between Steve Coppel and Singto? Well, we'll see that with time, right? Hmm. But uh, well, obviously, you see the strength in uh, ISL. Uh, they bring in a foreign coach who doesn't really have uh, too much familiarity with the Indian players. So they need somebody who is really good with Indian players, uh, knows their talent inside out and can work with them on a longer term to develop them. Yeah. Uh, so, so, yeah, you need a good Indian coach uh, in the in the staff uh, team. So that's why uh, so many ISL teams have gone for really good uh, assistant coaches uh, who are Indian. And uh, Ishwa Kamal was doing that uh, at Kerala Blasters, but maybe it left him, uh, you know, left him his job left a little to be desired. 
that's why they moved on and uh, wanted to get uh, Tanvas into it because uh, nobody really uh, has done a better job of really developing players uh, from a youth stage to the first team and strengthening the first team with at least the complete package right even uh, uh, i mean uh, Khalid Jamil uh, he did it in Mumbai FC with a limited success mm. i think uh, Shilong, uh, at Shillong Lajong uh, you know Thangwa Singh to come starting all the way uh, from the youth team uh, being involved with the academy he was way more hands on and uh, Kerala Blasters now that they are looking for a bigger season they need this and uh, if if anything that made them fall short last season hmm. was not managing the indian players that well okay yeah. and uh, will will have uh, and it it sort of it sort of eclipses and so many isl teams don't actually utilize their indian players uh, that well but it gets covered up because six of the uh, players on the pitch are foreigners, foreigners and yeah. you have 10 foreigners in the squad hmm. now it's less now it's five foreigners and eight in the squad so indian players are more important so yeah. you have to give more attention towards that hmm. right uh, how do you look at kevin about his point taking from his point that you know uh, the reason why we've seen now we've seen from the time at least i think uh, fc goa and kerala blasters have only done a few signings uh, in in respect to the coaches and assistant coach now i mean fc goa we saw them roping in a uh, derek perera who also knows the indian players really well and here is singto so do you see that as the strategy now for isl teams because we have more indian players on the pitch I think uh, what Chiranjit mentioned is just completely perfect. It completely makes sense uh, to have a foreign coach for namesake, you know, mm. because uh, nobody will want an Indian coach to be heading at the ISL. Because again, it's all about the name. It's all about the glamour. Mm. You know, even if there's an ISL franchise who would go with that move, having an Indian coach as there uh, at, at the head coach level, it will be a big thing hmm. but yeah. nobody is right to make that jump as yet hmm. so w- all they can do is uh, keep someone uh, a foreign coach at the head coach level and you get in an assistant coach you know assistant coach's job is really big you know what you do not see on the field is just everything that is being done by the assistant coach yeah. the head coach is the one who's planning for the sessions hmm. but the the conducting of sessions and scouting and uh, you know it's uh, it's many hats hmm. worn by by the yeah. assistant coach so, Thang Bhai Shinto, you know how, how good he has been with hmm. Indian players, scouting them and giving them chances, you know. It just helps the the, uh, the, the head coach. It makes his job much, much easier. Hmm. Now, just, uh, to add to, just yeah. to add to what Kevin said, uh, you know, uh, the, the big thing is that he's not just the ex- assistant coach. He's the technical director, director of the youth, youth development. Yeah. He's going to work at the academy hands-on. And he's in in a way, uh, I think he's very unique when it comes to developing Indian players because, uh, first of all, he's uh, so intelligent and has that kind of experience in developing players. But also, not many people uh, who haven't seen him up close know this is because the guy can speak so many languages. You know, he's mm-hmm. lived for years in Shillong. Uh, he can speak good Khasi. Mm. Uh, he's Manipuri. He can uh, speak Manipuri pretty well. I think he's a little bit converse in Mizo as well. Uh, he speaks Hindi very fluently. English is really good at, mm. and he speaks Bengali like, like it's it's just you know, uh, mm. is is eighty ninety percent proficient in it. Mm. So the guy speaks like six seven languages. Yeah, he can add one covers. more to that probably in Kerala. <laughs> yeah, he can he can uh, learn Mal- Malayalam in the next couple of years. But yeah. It covers all the major regions where the young players come exactly. from. Exactly, right. Right, and he can. That's how he can really, uh, you know, be and un- understand the players so well. Because so often you see Mizo players or Manipuri players or even uh, the Bengali players uh, who don't speak uh, Hindi or English that well. Hmm. They they don't really, you know, uh, it it hampers them because they can't express address their the cra- even the media and, as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not media. Just, just to just mm. telling the coach. This is exactly where I'm having trouble. This is how I wanted oh, to do. You know, okay. you want that conversation to be super fluid, mm. right? And when you have a coach who speaks so many languages uh, and has that kind of experience to boot, 
it really helps you along hmm. Kevin, this is like a jackpot for Kerala Blasters, no? Having Thangbhai Singh to yeah. roped in him at the right time that too, when the clubs were in you know, a kind of okay. And plus, you go. look look at the degrees that he's yeah. you know uh, earned in coaching. Exactly. He's uh, uh, he is pro oh, license yeah. and he's also done his conditioning. Uh, hmm. The another course uh, from the AFC. So all in all, uh, he's much a better package than uh, anyone else could have been there. Hmm. And just this Indian connect. Yeah. You no know, as Chiranjit mentioned this I wasn't aware of this you know it just uh, helps you it just doubles you uh, in bonding with your players and what mm-hmm. else do you want if you if you if you can bond well with the players it just it takes you your your performance to another level hmm. yeah absolutely i think uh, kevin's uh, love and respect for him has only really increased now <laughs> I, I, think. i think he might be already <laughs> learning malayalam by now yeah <laughs> so, so yeah from the time probably he must have signed in like okay now next my i know my next language what is the next language yeah, there must be a sheet underneath this contract you know <laughs> just sign up for the malayalam classes <laughs> <laughs> well, that as well. Uh, now, overall, how do you look at these things? I mean, uh, we've seen a trend of, uh, you know, Chiranjit. If you remember, we've mentioned this in the past as well. The recycled, reused uh, method. You no, know, what Ailee used to follow, and now slowly ISL is doing that as well. I mean, the one that you've tried and tested, like Steve Coppel is back, or uh, they are again using the Ailee coaches as assistant coaches. Finally, knowing the caliber. Okay, fair enough. Not giving them. uh the head coach uh, post okay no problem but just like kevin mentioned i think uh no 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 hmm. you, yeah, that, that's not how it is at all i mean steve coppel delivered so well started badly but hmm. recovered hmm. they finished second in the table that's a success yeah yeah you know that's their highest finish ever hmm. i don't care how, how many times they finished fourth and reached the final does not matter the higher you finish in the table the better it is and this time you don't have stupid semi finals and finals so that's mm. what matters in the end mm. so it makes complete sense it, it's not recycling it's retaining mm. so that's what they went with the coach that already brought them success and already knows the franchisee knows the management and has enough uh, ammunition in, in his arsenal to deliver it again and bringing in uh, you know uh, this guy with thangbo singh to it it really just uh, strengthens their own uh, home department hmm. because uh, you know you just you just need a broader uh, canvas this season and uh, thangbo singh to provides that so this is not recycling this is uh, just taking on uh, the best that is available uh, uh, you know among your resource list hmm. uh, so what i what i wanted to ask you was do you see now we spoke that isl teams are not uh, really yet ready to take up uh, indians as their head coaches so do you see that any teams uh, doing that this season yeah i don't see it happening this season because the original eight franchises uh, are not that frankly you know creative or risk taking enough uh, to really you know make that jump Uh, I mean, I, I, at least I don't see them doing it yet. Bengaluru FC will uh, stick with their coach, and I'm not exactly sure about Tata what they're trying to do. But uh, it seems like they are going for Ishfaq Ahmed as their assistant coach. Mm. Uh, so there's a good chance they will go for a foreign coach as well. The thing is, uh, ISL franchises so far haven't had that experience of working with really good Indian coaches for a longer period of time. Okay. Mm. Yeah, they are uh, Indian teams. They have not really that level of connect with Indian football that the Ali clubs have. So they have, uh, you know, they play teams which are more majority foreigners, and of course they go for uh, uh, foreign coaches because that partly has a, a show business aspect of it. We want to attract attention from overseas, attract investment from overseas. So foreign coaches go a long way. You you have somebody who is coached a club in Germany or England or Holland, uh, and uh, you know it it raises uh, some uh, eyebrows and gets you better foreigners in. But as the number of foreigners go down and the season gets longer, and uh, these clubs spend more time actually connecting with Indian football through these coaches, you know, through appointments like Derek Pereira and Thangbhai Singhdo. Hmm. they will come to see that to succeed in india an indian head coach is not a bad idea sometimes it's the best thing you can do look at how khalid jamil can uh, you know play in the world fc look at how um, uh, sanjay sen can change the culture at mohanmagar 
So all of this they will uh, come to realize, and I I see. an indian head coach in the next 3 years in isl okay Now, but one another point uh, on what just chiranjit spoke you know uh, th- there is something that is very beneficial for indian assistant coaches here we seen at uh, northeast united hmm. wingada hmm. he had an assistant coach in francesco hmm. he moved uh, wingada moves to the malaysia national team as a head coach hmm. and he takes francesco along with him an indian coach hmm. you know that that's very beneficial you get exposed you get uh, you know get you know you that chances are created mm. you know, if a foreign coach does uh, enjoy the work of the assistant coach there is a lot of you know possibility that once the head coach moves you see how a package moves yeah. you know when uh, one coach moves from one club to another he takes along his technical staff he takes along the players that he's you know very fond mm. of mm. that that can really help and uh, suffice his needs at the club mm. so this right. is very beneficial for indian coach, yeah. coaches even if they did not uh, head the coach mm. coaching staff there mm. but it's yeah. it's going to lo- go a long yeah, way it's so good for exposure down just here we are not just seeing players go to other clubs it's also good for the coaches yeah. as well but just like chiranjit mentioned probably in the coming years in the 2 3 years we shall see uh, the importance given to indian coaches and the isl teams taking them into consideration now he mentioned one person uh, in that uh, that was sanjay sen and mohan bagan now what is with uh, that happening is it uh, hap- is it confirmed that they are retaining him Uh, they're still sticking with Sanjay Sen. Is there something happening at Mohan Bagan? <laughs> We don't see or hear anything in the news. Yeah, Chiranjit, you are the man who can yeah. answer that. You know, Sanjay Sen is staying at Mohan Bagan from mm. what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay, and there is already given a list of uh, players uh, to the Mohan Bagan officials. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they're trying to sign uh, Rafael Fernandez and Raul Wilson Rodriguez. There okay. There was even uh, talk of uh, Antti Martin giving him talk, uh, talks with Mohan Bagan. So. Finally, okay. you see Mohan Bagan settling on something, you know, and I don't think it's a fully bad decision altogether because uh, they came close to two trophies, mm. you know, uh, second in Ali, one or second in Federation Cup, and at some point you have to grow a perspective on the other. That's not the worst thing uh, okay. you can do in this year. Okay, I think uh, hopefully even Mohan Bagan will catch up to the pace of their rival club. So Katsumi is- and Norde have been released. Katsumi, we are hearing either that he may go to uh, North East United, or he can go to Delhi Dynamos. But uh, a few of the Mohan Bagan officials want him to stay. But it seems like because uh, the budget may be smaller, hmm. uh, they may just decide to put, they give a big offer to Sony Norde, and if he accepts, then they just uh, go with three new foreigners who will be actually cheaper on the purse. Okay. Uh, uh, to go and go for the, the entire season. So it's 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 a bit unclear on the custom you said on the I think a lot of uh, mathematical issues happening there you know to keep one player yeah. and, and to keep even, him even uh, Khalid Jamil hmm. uh, is uh, you know apparently uh, looking for another Japanese midfielder He's, he wants you to you know what he to come to East Bengal. Uh, so it's uh, a lot of shuffle going on uh, in terms of uh, players. everything hmm. and i'll tell you something really uh, interesting uh, which we may uh, you know discuss in detail at in, in a later episode it's it's just just look at the kind of uh, you know budget per uh, reduction that has happened in isl hmm. uh, it's 18 crores uh, per team and they have to buy 10 foreigners with that so in foreigners it's going to be around 12 13 crores so for 17 indians it is 5 crores hmm. Uh, out of that 18 crore, hmm. 17 Indians in five crores. That, that that means they can't really pay Indian players that much. So if that artificially reduces the kind of money ISL teams can spend on Indian players, maybe some of the I League clubs can outbid ISL teams on some of the players. Hmm. So most of the talent will go to ISL, but maybe you will see some. Good Indian players playing in I League. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Now that's was the that was the news about all the signings that we have for you in the show all you know together compiled and we spoke about it. But all the later other confirmations of other signings we shall talk about in the coming days because we're a daily show. We come to you every day. Now if you're listening to us on YouTube, uh, hit the like, share, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell icon so you get updates of our new episodes. And if you you can also listen to our show on Audio Boom, SoundCloud, iTunes, and various other podcasting apps. Uh, uh, you can read about all these stories on our website, the Fan Garage. 
dot com. You can catch us on Twitter, Chiranjee Toja Boza underscore Kevin. Sajju Matthew ninety four, and uh, do follow the TFG football Twitter handle. And have a great day, folks. Enjoy Eid Mubarak. Yes, Eid Mubarak. Have lots of food. And come back to us tomorrow once again. Cheers. That was Tantrik Steve from Hansraj College, Delhi, performing at IIT Bombay's Mood Indigo. Just like them, there's a lot of new talent and art coming out of colleges all across India. But unfortunately, most of this goes completely unnoticed or ignored. To fix this, we started ATKT.in. Hi, I'm Ankur. I'm a musician and a rapper, and I found that one of the best things about being an artist myself is finding new talent. Through ATKT.in. Tanya my colleague who's a dancer and our whole team really is putting all of our efforts into discovering and promoting all the coolest talent that's coming out of colleges all across India and this goes up on our website our social media TV radio and of course this podcast with IVM make sure you go to our website support the talent with your likes your shares your comments all of that really matters go ahead check it out atkt.it Good evening ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking sorry to say but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun as you can see there's death destruction and chaos taking place all around us but don't you worry food and drinks will be served shortly and i would recommend checking out IVM podcasts to get some of your favorite indian podcasts we'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over thank you